The overskirt inspiration came from browsing hundreds of plates and catalog images from the natural form era. Something I noticed is there were a fair amount of asymmetrical overskirt images. I really wanted this design to stand out amongst the natural form era outfits I'd seen remade. And because this would also be my first Disney bounding foray, I also wanted to showcase my love of embellishments. As so many of my friends are big Disney fans, I've never been a diehard, and I differ in that. And I was even a little reluctant to do this collaboration. But I dove in, trusting that it would inspire me to do something new, and it has. I rented both Frozen 1 and 2 on Prime. I had seen Frozen 1 before and was struggling to find inspiration, though I really liked Anna's color scheme. Then I watched Frozen 2. My little pagan heart began to sing. The elemental theme underlying the whole message of the movie sucked me in. Design-wise, I'll admit, I was still mostly in love with Anna's clothing and colors. I even took lots of screenshots of their mother's clothes, Anna's clothes, and the coronation gown. Oh my goodness, that coronation gown. But the fabric I had on hand suited Elsa more, and it was Elsa's learning to master her connection to the elements that made me fall in love with the story. So hence, onward I went. Uh, going to be working on my natural form era dress. So right now it is in that state. I have been working on the overskirt all day yesterday. I didn't film any of this. I was really um, just in a zone. I got the pleating done on the front, which I'm really happy with. You, you can see that. I love the way that works. Um, I actually took the Truly Victorian TV 326 and I cut out just this upper apron part. I cut out the two pieces that go on it. They're called panniers is what they're called. And I sewed them together so you can see where they're sewn together. But then instead of drafting it equally this way, I'm doing a, an offset so it comes up high on this side, which I really like. And then it goes down low on this side. And this isn't sewn down yet because all along this white strip, I'm going to embroider or applique, I haven't decided which, the little elemental symbols. So like this one's water and it's got the, the little image on it and I'm gonna be putting them on this. And I wanna do the four elements plus maybe a snowflake, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. but. I haven't done the clasp yet on it, but I really like the way this is poofing. Um, I'm, I'm just really enjoying the drafting of this. Now it's got an extra little fluff here because I've actually got the tapes pulled up. I've got these little rings in the waistband where the tapes are sliding into to give it a little bit more runch. Um, so that's what I'm going to work on today is probably figuring out what I'm going to put on this sash and then, um, start working on that because I don't want to do the bodice until I have the overskirt finished. I was quite hesitant in drafting my own pattern for the overskirt. So I went ahead and purchased the TV 326 1880 Hermione overskirt from Truly Victorian. I then chose to modify the pattern from there. I used the front pleated pieces and the cascading back piece. I played with the tapes on the inside using bias cut strips from the interlining fabric I had used on the foundation skirt. Here is a little clip of the hand stitched hem of the overskirt.
To begin the design on the sash, I first needed to lay out the designs and figure out what they would look like. I drew out several images. Eventually, I settled on a layout. I wanted to remain as authentic to the Disney idea of the symbols for the elements and still be creative. I drew out several different designs and once I started working with the felt, I discovered that I kind of deviated a little bit, but I really enjoyed the cutting and the gluing and putting it all together and creating unique symbols that were inspired by Frozen 2 rather than copied directly. I really wanted a symbol for the combination of all four of the elements, a elemental spirit icon. And so I found this beautiful iron-on jeweled uh, star or snowflake pattern, and I put that on the middle piece. As per normal, I really enjoy embroidering applique. So all the individual pieces were appliqued on using a buttonhole stitch. I've talked about this in some of my other vlogging videos, but the resin casting was probably the most tedious and took the longest to prepare for this project. I did order molds on Etsy and I had to pour eight at a time and they had to cure for 24 hours. At first, I thought to make all the resin pieces in color, but after some experimentation and fails, I discovered I really liked the crystalline type look better anyway. It did take eight weeks to get all of the needed pieces for the overskirt. Once I had all of the pieces cast and hardened, I pulled out my trusty Dremel and bits. I then drilled all the original holes in the crystalline pieces so that I could get a needle and thread through each and every piece. Once all of the pieces were drilled and sanded, I was ready for assembly. 
I had glass beads already in my stash left over from a brooch making class back in 2011 or so. I pulled them all out, sorted them into colors. I used beading thread that was waxed and my longer, fine quilting needles. I decided to do some free form, so few of the bead combinations were repeated and none of the elemental crystals were on the same side by side. On the sash portion of the overskirt, beside the applique of the appropriate element, I used corresponding colors and elemental gems. Then, around the edge of the front of the skirt, I stuck to just the gra glass crystals and elemental gems. I am really quite pleased with how the weight of the gems help the drape of the sash and assist in the drape of the asymmetry design of the overskirt. I was a little concerned it would be too heavy. The overskirt is not interlined and I was also concerned the weight of the gems and beads would drag the overskirt down. None of my worries materialized. The material is quite busy and adding the applique and gems really adds dimension to design and does not take away or add too much. The natural form arrow was all about the swag, and though there, are no, there is no lace in this overskirt, it certainly has swag. But I am so pleased with how the jewels came out and how they glitter in the light. And the colored ones. I'm just so tickled by how this came out.